everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to be doing a really, really exciting video. I'm going to be talking all about Jane Austen and ranking her books from worst to best. This is a video that I mentioned filming a few months ago now and quite a lot of you said that you'd be really interested in seeing it. I'm finally getting around to filming it. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Let me start off this whole thing by saying that there is no bad Austen novel in my opinion. <laughs> I absolutely love Jane Austen. I've been reading her novels over the past seven years or so. I've reread a couple of them multiple times and I love them all. So you could rank them however you wanted and I wouldn't complain. But thinking about and debating and even arguing about <laughs> what the best Austen novels are is just fun. They're all so amazing and they all have their strengths. This is just about what I think is the best in my humble opinion and what I love the most. So I get quite passionate about this topic. I'm very precious about the Austens which I think are the best. So get ready for some fangirling some gushing, some adoration, and probably some slight defensiveness, even though nobody's even arguing with me yet. Firstly, let me just highlight all of the things that Jane Austen does beautifully generally and why all of her novels are the best. So her writing is gorgeous and perfect, and you can tell that every single word is so specifically chosen. Her characters are amazing and memorable and lovable and flawed and just brilliant. She is witty as hell, her books are satires and they explore class differences and gender differences and of course her romances are just... All of these books are amazing, they're all so special, this is just my personal ranking and as a bonus I'm also going to be giving you my favourite quotes from each of the books as we go along because who doesn't love a good Austen quote? So coming in at number six, my least favourite Austen is Northanger Abbey. Northanger Abbey tells the story of 16 year old Catherine Morland. When Catherine goes to Bath with some family friends, she meets the Tilneys and the Tilneys there invite her to stay at their country estate called Northanger Abbey. When Catherine goes to Northanger Abbey, her love of gothic literature allows her imagination to run rather wild and <laughs> she gets into quite a bit of trouble. At its heart this novel is a gothic parody, it is the most quirky of Austen's novels and the most humorous a lot of people would say and overall the tone of this one just isn't quite my scene. So the characters in this book are very distinct, they're just not my favourite. So Catherine is very sweet and very sincere even though she is quite silly sometimes. <laughs> and Tilney is quite different to other leads in Austen novels. He is much less serious and masculine, perhaps, and he can definitely be quite patronising. Austen mocks these characters all the way through this book, and not in a mean way, you can definitely feel the fondness she has for them, but she definitely mocks them, and that's kind of fair. <laughs> For me this book didn't flow particularly well, it split into two halves, one in Bath and one in Northanger Abbey, and the two parts just seemed quite distinct for me. This book is undeniably fun and lively and dramatic. It just isn't my favourite and I don't absolutely love it. As for quotes for this book, one of the most famous quotes from this sums up the book really well and I think it's really lovely and that is, if adventures will not befall a young lady in her own village she must seek them abroad. And another quote which I really love from this book <laughs> I think is hilarious. It's kind of harsh but there's something about it that just tickles me and it's said by Mr Tilney and that is the person be it gentleman or lady who has not pleasure in a good novel must be intolerably stupid. <laughs> Coming in in fifth place is Mansfield Park. This novel tells the story of Fanny Price who is born into quite a poor family before she is adopted by some richer relatives and goes to live with them at Mansfield Park. So in this novel we get to see what happens when two Crawford siblings move to the area and meet Fanny and her cousins and they bring with them tons of glamour and flirtation and a lot of influence. So this used to be one of Austen's most well-loved novels I believe but now it never really seems to be. I've never heard of anyone say that Mansfield Park is their favourite Austen, and I do suspect that that is because of the tone of this book. So some people view this as Austen's most morally serious work, which for a lot of people isn't what people go to Austen for, and Fanny is definitely 
quite a virtuous protagonist. I didn't find her boring like I've heard quite a lot of other people did. I also didn't massively love her. So this is the novel that is known for being the best portrait of its protagonist. So Fanny isn't a standout protagonist in ways that the other Austen protagonists are. So she isn't massively witty like Elizabeth Bennet or incredibly clever like Emma Woodhouse. But she is quite strong and brave in a very real way, which is really nice. This one does have a very moralistic point to it. It kind of concludes that if you are a good person, you will be happy and you will be rewarded, even if you aren't rich. And I kind of like that. I do enjoy a quite moralistic tone to a 19th century novel. I don't know why. I just <laughs> find it quite satisfying and comforting. In terms of the characters in this novel, I wasn't massively in love with any of them. I didn't care about any of them so much, which I tend to do in Austen novels. And I didn't particularly ship any of the romances whilst I was reading either, which is a shame because I do like to really get behind the romances. <laughs> but of course it is lovely and fantastic and a joy to read, don't get me wrong. <laughs> In terms of quotes for this one, I actually think it has one of the best Austin quotes. It's got a really, really lovely quote that I think is really apt and really important and I don't often hear people referring to it and that is we all have a better guide in ourselves if we would attend to it than any other person can be. Now coming in at fourth place is Sense and Sensibility. So this novel tells the story of the two Dashwood sisters, the sensible and very level-headed Eleanor and the more emotional and romantic Mary Anne. And this novel essentially just explores their two parallel experiences of love. This novel's premise is just lovely. There's something about the two oh so different sisters and comparing their similarities and differences and virtues and vices that is just so fun. Some find Edward Ferrers to be one of Austen's most dull romantic leads and I would kind of agree with that. He doesn't excite me in <laughs> the ways that some of the Austen male leads do. But I do have to say that Willoughby, Marianne's love interest, is a particularly interesting character in this one. When you read the opening of this book, you can definitely tell that it was one of Austen's earlier novels, I would say. It's a little bit info dumpy, a little bit stilted and stodgy. I always tend to think of this novel as bringing together a lot of the virtues and skills of the other Austen novels, but not doing any of them quite the best. So it's definitely funny and quite charming and heartwarming, but not the most heartwarming. <laughs> I'd say this is a very good Austen novel that sums up her work perfectly overall, but it doesn't do anything the best. My favourite quote from this one is by dull old Edward, <laughs> and I actually think it's really perceptive, and that one is, I wish as well as everybody else to be perfectly happy but like everybody else, it must be in my own way. And coming in at number three is Emma. Now we're getting into the really good stuff. So Emma tells the story of a young girl called Emma Woodhouse, who is very spoilt and quite rich, and she's beautiful and meddlesome, and she thinks that she has a talent for matchmaking people. Naturally, this has devastating consequences and a lot of drama ensues. Whether or not you love or hate Emma, I think it is quite undeniable that she is one of the best drawn of Austen's characters. She is a spoiled young lady, so that makes her quite different from the other protagonists. And there's just so many different subtleties to her character that Austen builds in. Austen famously wrote that Emma would be a character whom nobody but herself would much like or something like that. But I don't really think that's true. I think Emma is so lovable. I love that she's quite difficult and she isn't a damsel in distress waiting for a man. <laughs> and I love that she is flawed and real and she comes to realise that. I love Mr Knightley. He is definitely one of my favourite male leads, probably tied with Captain Wentworth from Persuasion. There's just something about him that is so attractive. Another thing that is so great about Emma is that even though there is the heterosexual romantic relationship and the typical marriage ending, there is a huge focus throughout this novel on the female friendships. So we get to see Emma's relationship with Mrs Weston and her unequal friendship with Harriet Smith and Jane Fairfax. And the actual moment of realisation that Emma has towards the end of the book isn't due to an interaction with a man, but due to the way she is treating Miss Bates. 
This book is so entertaining, it's so engaging, it's so cleverly crafted and well thought through. I think it's an absolute gem and one that so many people would love. In terms of quotes, Emma has some of the best quotes ever. Emma herself says a few lines that are just absolute gems and I'm just gonna <laughs> read you a few of them now. So the first one is perfect <laughs> and that is, I always deserve the best treatment because I never put up with any other. She also says, you must be the best judge of your own happiness, which is very true. And the final one, which is probably the best ever, is I may have lost my heart, but not my self-control. So coming in in second place is Pride and Prejudice. This is probably the most famous and most well-loved novel of Jane Austen's and it tells the story of protagonist Elizabeth Bennet who is a spirited young girl who is navigating the marriage market with her sisters when two eligible bachelors enter the neighbourhood, Mr Darcy and Mr Bingley. This book is gorgeous. It is so bright and sparkling and charming. It's probably the most easily lovable of Austen's novels and I can 100% see why this is often considered to be her best and most popular novel. This novel has some of the best characters ever. Elizabeth is so intelligent and witty and sharp and stubborn and she's always thinking about her sisters above herself and I absolutely love her. All of the character dynamics in here are fantastic and just generally the characters are definitely some of Austin's most memorable. The chemistry and romance and tension between Elizabeth and Mr Darcy is so good, is renowned for a reason. Mr Darcy is basically the perfect male lead. He is a bit of a twat but has a heart of gold. This book has absolutely everything you could hope for. The pacing is perfect. There's tension, there's emotional and painful separations, the pompous and stuck up are triumphed over, the storyline is exciting and engaging and surprising all the way through, and of course it has a lovely happy ending. Ultimately this book is about marriage and partnership and what makes it good, and the answer isn't just sex and physical attraction, look at Lydia and Mr Wickham, and the answer isn't money, look at Charlotte Lucas, and the answer isn't even simply love. Elizabeth and Darcy have much more than love. They have a mutual respect and they both know that they're both equals. In short, this is one of the most perfect novels I have ever read. In terms of quotes, we're going to ignore It Is A Truth Universally Acknowledged because we've all heard it a million times and it isn't even the best. And we're also going to ignore I declare after all that there is no better enjoyment than reading because that is one of the most misused quotes ever and it annoys me more than it probably should. <laughs> that quote is not said by somebody who loves reading, it is said by a snotty side character who is taking the piss out of reading and Elizabeth has one of the best quotes in this novel and it sums up her character perfectly and that is, there is a stubbornness about me that can never bear to be frightened at the will of others. My courage always rises at every attempt to intimidate me. And Charlotte also says a really lovely line in the novel, which is a very famous line, but I absolutely love it. And that is, we are all fools in love. And so coming in at number one, my favourite ever Austen novel is Persuasion. This novel tells the story of Anne Elliot, who is 27 years old and still unmarried. Gasp. Seven years earlier she had been engaged to Captain Wentworth who she loved but she was persuaded by her family to break off the engagement because he was quite poor and didn't have any family connections to recommend him. The two are then brought back together again when this novel takes place when Anne's family home is let to Wentworth's brother-in-law. This is the most gorgeous, the most lyrical and the most romantic in my opinion Austen novel. It is so deep and lovely and contemplative and I couldn't love it more. This book looks mainly at themes of human weakness and resolve and respect and desire and it does all of that so well and of course themes of class and gender imbalances and societal expectations are all explored in here as well and I love all of that. Wentworth is one of my favourite leading men of all time and I think you get the sense while you're reading that he was one of Austin's favourites as well. Him and Anne are just 
so meant for each other. <laughs> this book is not forced at all. It has everything that the other novels have, but in a really light and subtle way, which I really love. It's definitely humorous, but it isn't ridiculous or frivolous at all. And it's profound and interesting, but it isn't overtly moralizing or heavy. And it ends in the lovely, bright and triumphant way that we love Austen novels to end in. Some don't end in this way, like Mansfield Park, for example, but this one does, and I am such a sucker for that. <laughs> this book just has the perfect balance of everything in it for me. I feel like you can really tell the amount of care and attention and love that went into writing it while you're reading it. And it's just the best, it's my favourite, and it's the one that I love the most. In terms of quotes, this novel has my favourite Austen quote ever, said by Mrs Croft, which is such a banger, and that is, I hate to hear you talk about all women as if they were fine ladies instead of rational creatures. None of us want to be in calm waters all our lives. And there's another quote which I really love by Anne, which I relate to quite a lot. I like to think myself and Anne quite similar in many ways. <laughs> and that is, my idea of good company is the company of clever, well-informed people who have a great deal of conversation. That is what I call good company. So there we go. That is the definitive ranking of Jane Austen's novels. I'm sure nobody would disagree with me. Please let's talk about Jane Austen down below in the comments. I would love to know whether you love Austen, how many of her novels have you read, which are your favourites? Do you agree with me? Don't we disagree? Do you hate some of them? Do you not like Austen at all? I would love to know anything. Let's just talk about her and Preferably, let's fangirl about her. I really hope you all enjoyed watching this video. I hope it was as fun for you to watch as it was for me to film. If you love Austin, I hope it was really nice for you to watch. And if you don't love Austin, then I'm sorry if this was a bit boring for you, but we'll be back onto normal stuff next week. Thank you so much for watching everyone, as always. I really do appreciate every single one of you who is watching and liking my videos and commenting. It just makes my life. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you next week. Bye everyone!